Hello, my name is Anthony Francione and I am co-founder of White Box Geospatial. Today, I'll be providing you a quick tutorial on how to use the Yield Filter tool in White Box Tools. The Yield Filter tool is located within our Precision Agricultural Toolbox and is currently part of the General Toolset Extension. This tool accomplishes a common problem for those that work in the Precision Agricultural sector. When working with data such as those from corn, soy, wheat, and other crops, these data sets can be extremely noisy. Yield data are noisy due in part to the nature of their collection. For example, where harvested rows overlap, lower than expected crop yields may be measured in the second overlapping swath. Field edges are susceptible to um, errors without a full swath of crop. The starts of new swaths are also prone to errors because of the misalignment between the time the monitor begins recording and when the grain starts flowing. Lastly, changes in harvesting speeds, such as speeding up or slowing down, can result in error, errors in yield measurements. However, to overcome this problem, there are really only two solutions. The first being some sort of manual processing that is carried out through Excel, or Studio, or another yield editing software, or you can pay to have the data processed. Here at Whitebox Yield Spatial, we have created a solution called the Yield Filter Tool. This tool can smooth yield point patterns, particularly those accounting for differences among adjacent swath lines. On our website, if you're interested in learning more about the Yield Filter Tool or any other tool in the Precision Agricultural Toolbox, you can do so by navigating to our user manual, then clicking on the Precision Agricultural Toolbox link, and this will load the entire, all the tools that are located within the Precision Agricultural Toolbox. We also have a very informative blog post written on the Precision Agricultural Toolbox, so I invite you to check that out in our blog as well. I will attach all these links in the video description as well below. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Yield Filter tool using Runner. As I already stated previously, the Yield Filter tool is a part of the General Toolset extension. In a previous tutorial video, I talked about how to download and activate a license to use the General Toolset extension. If you have not watched that video or you're unfamiliar with that process, I would suggest watching that video first. But to get started today, we're going to start by launching Whitebox Runner from the terminal. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open a terminal window. We're going to open a terminal window and we're just going to navigate to the environment where you have white box tools and the general tool set extension for me that's in a test tutorial a test doc um, folder and it's in wbt and now that i'm in wbt i'm going to do python 3 oops wb runner to launch white box runner when runner launches you're gonna to want to navigate to the Precision Agricultural Toolbox in our toolboxes on the side, open Precision Agriculture, and then select the tool of interest, which for us today is the Yield Filter tool. When it opens, you'll see that the, the user input parameters that are required for the tool, such as input points, yield pass name, pass field name, output points, swath width, Z score, and min and max yield. Before we actually run the tool today, let's check on our test data set. So this is our test data set. This is some raw yield data that I had access to for a small farm located in Ontario, Canada in the year 2018. The crop type of interest is also corn. You can see that the yield data is quite messy and there are a ton of points that are erroneous. Looking at the range of corn, you could see that it ranges from about six to 1,688 bushels per acre. Bushels per acre. Those values are drastically exaggerated. These noisy, error points can be a result of many common issues, such as combine velocity changes, measuring the same or overlapping swaths, and more. Additionally, take a look at the field edges. They're, these are notorious errors as they are not full, of swath, uh, not full swath of crops. Let's take a look at the attribute table now. You will see that in the attribute table, the information that presented is azimuth, distance, elevation, speed, and yield. These values are the raw data values that are pulled straight out the combine harvester. I should note, this is how the yield data set that I am using looks. You may have access to a yield data set that has much more information or is laid out completely differently. Just make sure you are aware of the attribute table that contains your yield data. With that being said, let's go ahead and try and filter this noisy yield data set into something more usable. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead and head back to Runner. So for input points, I'm gonna use the uh, test data set that I have which is located in yield testing and it's called that. Yield field name, we actually need to type the parameter that's located in the attribute table. So let's go and get that again. So that is yield. This parameter is case sensitive, so make sure it is spelled correct. 
The next parameter is pass, num, pass field name. Fortunately, we don't have this information in this data set. It may be the case that a data set you are working with has pass line information, but this data set down, this data set does not. Pass line information is extremely useful when trying to reconstruct, analyze, or clean yield data. Thankfully, within the Precision Agri Toolbox, we have a tool called Recreate Pass Lines that will estimate the combine harvester pass line from yields point. If you would like to read more about this tool, I would suggest checking out the general tool set extension page and navigating to the Recreate Pass Lines tool and reading more from our manual. So let's go ahead and actually run that tool now. So you'll see in the Precision Agricultural Toolbox on the left-hand side, the Recreate Pass Lines tool. Just go ahead and click on that. And then this tool will open up and then you can populate it with the data. So input points, we're gonna put the same points that we had. Yield field name, we know to be yield. Once again, this is case sensitive, so make sure it is spelled correctly. I'll put pass lines, we're just gonna call it pass.shape. Points, we're just gonna call it points.shape. Lastly, let's leave the default value of 25 for max change in heading. If you have a more detailed information about the maximum allowable deviation in the combine header used to collect your data, feel free to enter that now. But for myself, I'm just gonna leave it as a default value. Once all that information is included, you can select run and the tool will execute. The tool executes in about 1.7 seconds. And now let's see what the output looks like. Looks like. So we're just gonna go ahead and head back to QGIS. Just gonna close this. We're gonna turn off the rock corn data. And we're gonna open those two files that we created, points and pass lines. I'm just gonna turn off points to show you the pass line file. So basically this is a network of pass line uh, information that was created from the yield data. And I'm just gonna turn that off and I'm just gonna open the points file. The points file is the exact same as the raw point data that we use. The only difference is that in the attribute table, you'll see there's a new attribute called pass num. This is the information that we need to run the yield filter tool. And all this information, azimuth, distance, elevation, speed, and yield has been copied over from the raw data set. So going forward, just we're just gonna use this file called points. So let's go back to runner now and actually run the yield filter tool because now we have the pass information, the pass line information and yield. Just gonna turn that off as well. And let's go back to the yield filter tool, accessing it through the toolbox. We're gonna add all that information again, but instead of adding uh, this raw file, we're gonna use this file we just created called points. The yield field name we know to be yield. Let's go and get the information about the pass number, pass line name. It's pass underscore num, all in uppercase. Output points, we're just gonna do filtered dot shape. The swath width is 6.096 meters, which is the equivalent to 20, a 20 foot combine. That is pretty standard, but if data set you or have has uses a larger or smaller combine, please enter that value in meters. If you're unsure of the swath combine width, you can check it out in QGIS using the ruler tool and just measuring the distance between two yield points. The Z score value is the threshold used for filtering. I'm just gonna keep that at 2.5, but for further experimentation for your data set might be required. Like I said previously, the crop type is corn. So the maximum yield value, I'm gonna get that information, the maximum minimum yield value, I'm gonna get that information from some online sources for Ontario in 2018. I gathered some information on what the expected range was, was in 2018 for corn in Ontario from AgriCorp. There's a produce map that I will show you. So this is the link that I found it at, max for 2018 corn yields, and this is the map. Because I can't tell you the location of the, the field where it is in Ontario, I'm just gonna use the minimum and maximum range just for inclusivity. So now that we know that the minimum range of corn in 2018 was 60 and the maximum was 240, we can go ahead and enter those values in the yield filter tool. So let's go back to runner. And let's enter those values now. So the minimum was 60 bushels per acre and the maximum was 240 bushels per acre. This information is a bit dated as of today and is only specific to this region. 
So the information that you may have on your crop yield data is more accurate. So I would suggest using that. Like I said, this is just a, this is just a test data set for a tutorial video. It's not perfect, but go ahead and use the information that you have. So taking all this information in, I'm going to go ahead and hit run and the tool will execute. It's just filtering the points now. So this tool executed in about 1.4 seconds and 2,567 individual yield points were filtered or the equivalent of 12.9%. So let's go ahead and actually take a look at the corn yield. So as we know, this was the raw data set. And now let's go ahead and add the filtered data set. And that we know to be filter.shape. I'm just going to go ahead and turn that layer off. You'll see right off the bat that some of the data sets as the filtered layers underneath, you'll see that some of the points are already removed because they did not fall within the expected range. You can see where they occur too: the field edges and the starts of swath, which are notorious to have errors. Um, that's pretty, pretty telling right off the start. But I'm just going to turn the unfiltered layer off for a second. I'm just going to set the symbology of the filtered layer. I like using graduated and the value, the output of the value, there's going to be a new field called average yield. This is the information that contains filtered yield. So make sure when you're going to set the symbology to view the filtered yield, you're using this average yield field. Yield is the raw information. So you don't want to view that. You want to use the filtered yield, which is average yield. And I like using the red, yellow, and um, green palette, classify, and I also like inverting the palette so that green is in line with small, um, small values of corn and red is high values of corn. So let's go ahead and view that now, classify, okay. You will see that looking at the filter deal, many of the spurious errors from the noisy data set are removed after filtering. Filtering. Also, the edges appear much more uniform. I'm just going to do a quick exercise of turning the filtered and unfiltered on and off. So this is the filtered that's shown, unfiltered. Filtered, unfiltered. You will see that yield has been effectively filtered and many, if not all, the erroneous and noisy yield points have been removed. Further experimentation may be required for your data set, such as adjusting the min and max values or maybe adjusting the threshold values. So that concludes this video. I hope that it has helped you to use the yield filter tool in the general tool set extension. If you have any questions, please ask them down below. You can ask them also in our Google group or send us an email at support at whiteboxgl.com. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our videos and stay posted for all new videos and updates. Thanks for watching.